transform the ancient art of batik which you find in Indonesia and also in Sri Lanka to a modern art form. I'm really mad. These were the exact words the legendary Ina De Silva used to describe herself in an interview a few years ago. She is known for building an empire out of a dying traditional art in Sri Lanka and rejuvenating Sri Lanka's batik and embroidery industries. Ina De Silva transformed the way in which textiles and batik especially amplified how we experience architecture. Today, batik and embroidery are at the forefront of Sri Lankan high fashion and art. So it might take you by surprise to find out that this art was almost lost in history. This was when Ina De Silva swooped in with the support of her select circle of artistic friends and local artisans to create a blueprint for these once dormant industries. In an interview back in 2011, Ina admitted that she was inspired to experiment with colours and designs because of her children who were scribble maniacs. In the late 1960s, after uncovering her creativity, Ina and her friends searched for batik on Britannica's encyclopedia and learnt how to perfect its art. Where we had a great tradition of embroidery, uh, by the middle of the 20th century, it was fading away. Um, but uh, Ina de Silva was inspired by a little pamphlet that was given to her by a man called Dr. Andreas Nell uh, and written by Ethel Kumaraswamy. And from there, she took on uh, to teach a group of uh, women from her village uh, with all the stitches and created these extraordinary works of embroidery uh, that are still being done. At the time, people thought this venture was destined to fail, but it didn't and well, the rest is history. Ina not only empowered the craft, but local artisans themselves by incorporating batik into everyday surroundings. This included batik saris, wall hangings, banners and flags, which rapidly gained popularity for their vibrant and unique take on Sri Lankan tradition in the modern age. Whatever Ina did, she did fantasy in a brilliant way. Ina also worked closely with architectural mastermind Jeffrey Bava after commissioning him to build a home in Colombo. After Ina moved to her ancestral home in Matale, she founded the Aluihare Heritage Centre, where she continued her work for the rest of her life. She trained the villagers in carpentry, wood carving, abstract hand painting, brass foundry, tie and dye, and of course, embroidery and batik. Along the way, she forged close bonds with her mostly female employed staff and even gave them the financial independence they didn't have before. The Aluihare Heritage Centre is now one of the oldest and most prestigious centres for artistry and design in the country. Sri Lanka's influence in high fashion and trademark in a diversified textile industry could be credited to this one ambitious woman. And even after her passing in 2015, her legacy continues to live on.